Encounters with the Narwhal by Armando Torres. This is called Cyclical Beings. Before I met Carlos, influenced by my Oriental readings, I had been in favor of the doctrine of reincarnation. It seemed a logical alter alternative to the Christian belief in the resurrection of the body. However, in one of his conversations, he observed that the dogmas of Christianity and the Eastern religions were suspiciously similar. Because they start from a common denominator, the fear of death. His comment threw me into a state of perplexity. It was a total, totally new focus on something that had always fascinated me. When I asked his opinion, Carlos tried to deviate my interest into another topic as if it were not worthwhile to speak of that matter. But later, changing tactics, he told me that all my beliefs about the survival of the personality were the result of social suggestions. They had told you that we have time, that there is a second opportunity. Lies. Sears affirmed that a human being is like a drop of water that separated from the ocean of life and began to shine by itself. That shine is the point of the assemblage perception. But, once the luminous cocoon is dissolved, individual awareness disintegrates and becomes cosmic. How could it return? For sorcerers, each life is unique, but you are hoping to repeat it. Your ideas originate in the high opinion you have of your own unity, but like everything else, you are not a solid block. You are flowing. You are me is a sum of beliefs, a memory, nothing concrete. I asked him why religions preach their very different doctrines. He answered, It is easy to understand they are answers to the ancestral fears of human beings. Each culture generated its own explanatory propositions, but only seers were beyond beliefs, corroborating those aspects of emanations of the eagles for themselves. He explained that there are energy clusters in the universe to which we are hooked, like the beads of a rosary are hooked to each other. We are cyclical. We are the result of a luminous stamp, and every time a new being is born, he embodies the nature of that pattern. But the chain that unites us is not of a personal nature. It doesn't imply transfers of memory or personality or anything like that. To survive death, it is necessary to be a sorcerer. By satisfying the eagle with a living replica, sorcerers are able to keep the flame of their individual awareness burning for eternities. But that is a feat. Do you think this greatest achievement of a warrior should be a free gift? I commented that recent studies have demonstrated that some people under very special circumstances are able to remember events of a past life. He insisted that it was an erroneous interpretation of facts. It is true that anyone can tune into certain living emanations that took place in other times and feel that he has lived not only one but many lives, but that is only one alignment among millions of possible alignments. The Sorcerer's Alternative I asked him if an ordinary person had any chance of surviving death. He answered that there is always one possibility, the way of the warrior. If you want to understand this, don't look at it in black and white. See it more in terms of movements of the assemblage point. The challenge of a warrior is to fix his attention and fight to maintain the awareness of his individuality even after his departure. When we reach a certain threshold of perception, we see that physical death is a challenge. Just as there are two ways of living, there are two ways of dying. In both, we can act as impeccable warriors or as unconscious idiots. That difference is everything. Do you mean that what happens after death depends on how we prepare for it? Perceiving the intention of my question, he answered, yes, but not in the way that you want to interpret it. The idea that being good or complying with a certain commandment or list of commandments will facilitate things is a fallacy, which has been transmitted to us by the social order. The only preparation that is worthwhile is to take on the rigors of the way of the warrior, which teaches us how to save energy and be impeccable. 
Since there are two forms of living and dying, there are also two kinds of people, those who feel immortal and those who are already dead. The first ones harbor hopes, the last ones do not. A warrior is somebody who knows that his time is already up, but still continues to fight because that is his nature. If you look into his eyes, you will find emptiness. But then, what is the sorcerer's alternative really about? There's only one way for a man to be ahead of his own end, through managing his energy. That work consists of dreaming, stalking, and recapitulation. These three techniques together give one result, the completion of the energy body. In a general sense, the duration of our existence depends on depends in great measure on how we treat our energy. We leave this life filled to the brim with everyday concerns. We are eroded by the things we see and touch, and for that reason we die. But if we call back to ourselves all that vital force through recapitulation, death can no longer be the same, because we will have our totality. From the seer's point of view, a warrior who has recapitulated his life does not die. His attention is so compact that it is one continuous and coherent line. It is not dispersed. His recapitulation never ends. It continues for eternity because it is the work of retracing his steps, of existing on his own and being complete. Just like we need a certain quantity of experience to function as individuals, a sorcerer requires sufficient practice in the second intention to be a true sorcerer. Otherwise, he won't be prepared when the time comes, and he will depart into infinity as an incomplete sorcerer. Nevertheless, a warrior who struggles all his life to reach the parameters of impeccability does have a second chance. He can gather the events of his existence and pick up the scattered energy in order to pass into the world of the Malwal. I asked him what a sorcerer does in that world, he answered. For most people, to die is to speechlessly enter something very unfamiliar, much like what we experience in ordinary dreams. There's nothing there. Nothing there has a linear sequence, and the concepts of time and space and gravity do not apply. Imagine what a warrior with the control of his dreaming double can do on a journey of that nature. No doubt you can see that this is a great feat of awareness. A sorcerer is somebody who spends his life tuning himself through arduous discipline. When his time arrives, he faces death like a new stage in his travel along the path. Unlike to an ordinary man, he doesn't try to soothe his fear with false hopes. The warrior departs for his definitive journey filled with joy and his death greets him and allows him to keep his individuality like a trophy. His sense of being is so finely tuned that he becomes pure energy and dis disappears with the fire from within. In that way, he is able to extend his individuality for thousands of millions of years. Thousands of millions? That's it. We are children of the earth. It is our ultimate source. The options of sorcerers is to unite with the awareness of the earth for as long as the earth.